For Aslan Media, this is Reza Aslan. It's Friday, May 18th. This week, I had the pleasure of taking part in a debate at UCLA about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. It was billed as a two-state versus one-state solution debate. I, of course, was on the side of the one-state solution. There was a lot of controversy around this debate, but I want to emphasize one thing very important, and that is that I am an advocate of the one-state solution not because I think it's in the best interest of the parties involved. It isn't. But because it's the only solution to the conflict. In fact, it's already happening on the ground now. That's right. What I am saying is that not only is the one-state solution the only path forward for the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, it's already happening. There is already one state. Now, it's an unequal state, it's an unfair state, some have even called it an apartheid state. But nevertheless, the fact that the Israelis and the Palestinians share a single political ecosystem, a single currency, the same resources, and borders that are so soft as to be almost non-existent, save for where the Israelis are building a massive wall to divide uh, the Palestinians from the Israelis, Nevertheless, what we are talking about when we're talking about the land between the River Jordan and the Mediterranean is already a single state. And so, rather than continuing the charade of, of believing in a two-state solution, believing that somehow 40 years of peace processes and negotiations and quartets that have brought us further from a two-state solution than we've ever been will suddenly miraculously reverse. That suddenly there will become the political will necessary in the United States, in Israel, in the Palestinian territories to create a stable and viable Palestinian state next to a safe and secure Israel. This to me seems like a fantasy. In fact, it sounds a little bit like addictive behavior. The people that I know, who are still fervent supporters of the two-state solution, are usually quite pessimistic about it. They'll say something along the lines of, well, it doesn't seem very likely, and certainly not in the near term, and not with the current political situation in Israel, and certainly not with the current climate in America, and perhaps not with the divisions between the Hamas in Gaza and, and Fatah in the West Bank. But nevertheless, this two-state solution can possibly still happen one day, maybe. Really? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again, but expecting a different result. That has been the sum and total of the peace process thus far. Meanwhile, there are now 600,000 Israeli settlers in the land that is supposed to be the future Palestine, and that number is accelerating every day. So you tell me, what is left of a future Palestinian state? What would Palestine even look like? To talk about Palestine as an actual state, we have to talk about it as having control over its borders, control over its sea routes, control over its airspace, control over immigration issues, and frankly, also a standing military, a means of defending itself. You tell me, are any of these in the offing? Is Israel about to provide the Palestinian Authority with control over any of the things I mentioned, let alone its own military? The issue here is not what is best for all parties. The issue here is not what we have to hope for in some aspirational sense. The issue is the facts on the ground, to use an Israeli term. We are slowly, slowly coming to a point wherein the idea of separating these two peoples with some kind of hard border has to be seen for what it is, a fantasy. The one-state solution is not the best solution. It's the only solution. For Aslan Media, this is Reza Aslan.